Okay, let's try that one more time. Hey guys, what's up? Pitmarth right here, and welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Not Radiant Dawn, like I said, like a moron in my last intro that you'll never hear. That was pretty stupid. Anyway, as you can probably already tell from the title, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, I don't edit the titles, but this is going to be a rather interesting episode based on the level, because I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now that the level is actually built up into stages. There's four of them in total. They're not very long, but overall it's going to make the level fairly long, or at least longer compared to what you're used to. So what uh, I'm going to be doing on this is actually showing the first two stages along with this dialogue, and then the uh, second two stages as well. So we'll be seeing that uh, the third and fourth stage in a separate video. So try to make it, you know, a little bit more, uh, simplistic, or at least shorter. So, now the Hawks have figured out from Neolucci accidentally telling them that, uh, Nassal has sold Rayson. And let's see. Now, believe it or not, I'm not going to spoil this, because unless you play the sequel, you're not going to understand. Nasala always has a very good reason for doing what he does, and it will explain it. So they're going to head out and try to find Rayson. In the meantime... So they've been searching in Serenus Forest for that heron, but have not been successful so far, and they're going to the forest's heart. And that's what we're going to be trekking them through. In the meantime, last battle, MVP Oscar. Not a surprise there. Very nice. So let's move on. Alright, what do we got here? We got some supports. We have Boyd with Mist. Alright, cool. Boyd and Mist actually have a very interesting uh, set of supports, both in this game and in the sequel. Experience and luck. Luck is probably one of the most useless skills. You need to have defense and strength. Or in Mage's case, magic and resistance. And HP would come in handy too. And here we have the servant, which is one of the guys from uh, Oliver's area. And he basically explains what the uh, force layout's going to be like. Let's see. So the heart of the force is divided into three large sections, maybe more, uh, four. So yeah, it says do bring lots of supplies. That's obviously important. Head soldiers of every type, mount and... Mounted units and magic users were especially powerful. Just be prepared for those two groups. Okay, and then as for Jill and Dead Van, they're not too important, but we're going to be watching them anyway.
And basically, it talks about why Jill is still with us, because, obviously, you know, since she wasn't really with our side, she kind of was forced to join us for that fight with the crows. That is why she's staying here, is because she realized that the goose are not completely evil. And then we have Dead Van. Or Dev Dan, not Dead Van. Yeah, see, when this guy's talking about the flowers, he's not being an idiot like Gaytree. He's actually talking about the flowers, not women. Okay, let's see what we got here. I have a nice share icon. Uh, I'm going to trade that to Stefan, let him use it, because, as I've already mentioned, Stefan does not have a very good luck stat. It's only 5 right now. We're going to increase that to 7. We have Gamble. We can go ahead and put that in the convoy. I'm not going to be using it. It's not a good skill, in my opinion. Uh, we can give the men staff to the convoy. And also the full guard. I'm actually going to be trying to use the unit that I don't typically use in this game and give him the full guard because he might actually do a pretty good job with it. And then uh, let's check out Rolf's defense 15. I think we're going to give the Draco shield to Soren. Because he doesn't tend to get very good defense upgrades. This is defense to 8. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, we can give that heavy spirit of the convoy. I don't think that's there's anything else. You're going to need a lot of supplies for this, but really, as long as you're doing decent, then you should be fine. I would recommend, if anything has a weapon use of less than 10, probably don't take it with you. I'm going to swap out my javelin for a new one, and then I guess I'll take in the heavy spear. There's not any Laguz units, I don't think. Off the top of my head, I don't remember there being any like feral ones, so you don't need Laguz weapons. If you want to use them, that's fine, but you don't need them. Uh, let's see. Soren will be fine, even though that Elwyn's about to run out, but I actually do want to uh, get another heal staff, so let's go ahead and buy one of those. Wait, can he use Mend yet? I don't know what his uh, staff weapon level is. It's still E. Okay, yeah. Well, he can only use heal, but that's just fine. Soren is a decent backup healer. He can't be, like, missed. He can't, like, use, you know, B-level stats, so he can't use, like, Physic or anything like that. But, you know, still. Pretty good. Um, Ike will actually not be doing a lot of fighting. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now that you need to get Ike up to level 20 because he's going to class up at the end of this four-stage map. So if you don't have him classed up, or at level 20 by the end of this, or right now anyway, you need to get him to level 20 or as close as you can. Hopefully you already do, but just in case. Let's go ahead and get Rolf's bow and the killer bow to that convoy. And we actually need to get some more bows for Rolf. They have two steel bows. Yeah, we'll buy one of these. I know that'll give him nothing but steel bows, but hey, I'll take it. He's a sniper, he'll do fine with them. Let's see. And we'll take a... How about a... I don't know. I kind of want to take the Poleaxe because it's good for against horseback units. So I guess we'll do that. Uh, let's see. about the ward staff. Plenty of mend uses, plenty of heal uses, restore. There's a few poison items here, but not too many. Stefan's doing fine. I think we're good. Let's go ahead and go to skills. We just have gamble, right? What this does, I don't know if I've gone over this yet, which is halves the unit's chance to hit, but doubles its chance to land a critical. I really do not find that worth it, so what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and sell that. Because honestly, it's it's not worth it. I'm not a gambler by nature, so I don't use that. That's just how I am. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we're going to work on getting Miss the experience for a little while here. Because I do want her to try to get her class up fairly soon.
And K-Man does not realize it, but while he sent me a message on Skype, he's actually in this video. Whether he wanted to be or not, I don't know, but now he is in part of it. He's sharing the experience. See what I did there? Sharing the experience? I know, it's a bad pun. What do you want? I could have signed Rolf Deadeye, but I want to save that occult scroll for Ike. You're not going to need any thieves, so don't worry about that. Uh... Is there anything else? I don't think so. Let's go ahead and save. And we are now in Serenus Forest. Because, you know, why not? This where we ended yesterday. So we're going to leave the Apostle and Alencia behind to wait here. So we don't have to be dragging them through the forest. And we head off. Even though Ike didn't actually do any walking there. Don't worry, this is not a Fog of War map. Thank goodness. Ugh, I'd hate to do this level with a Fog of War map. Even on hard mode, it's not Fog of War. I hate Fog of War maps. Those things are evil. And what's this? I do spy myself. Oliver! With this awesome music, so I'm going to be quiet while scrolling through the text. So what Oliver is basically going to be doing for the first three stages is running ahead and sending some of his uh, soldiers back to deal with us. Or more likely, we're dealing with them, but... Regardless. Let's do it. Alright. So, now that you've fast-forwarded this video, I just want to go ahead and say it again if you have already watched this, I apologize. But, if you fast-forwarded, I just want to tell you right now... That Ike will class up at the end of this four-stage map, so you need to get him to level 20 by the end of it here. And also, it is four stages, so I'll be making the first and second stage one video, and the third and fourth stage one video. So, you're only going to be seeing the first two this time. So with that out of the way, just go ahead and get it out of the way right now. Alright, reposition. You're not allowed to take a lot of units in here, but you will be able to add reinforcements later on. Uh, I don't want Volk with me. Or as already said, we the yeah, I've already said that we do not need a thief for this map. Uh, there's going to be enemy reinforcements. I believe they're all swordsmen, so we're going to leave Oscar back here. And that looks to be about good. Hopefully your uh, Rolf unit is a sniper by now, because he is actually very helpful within this uh, area. Because there's not a lot of archers slash snipers at this point. Case in point right here. And since there are a lot of, or at least from what I noticed from glancing at the map here a second ago, is a lot of these seem to be swordsmen. There's a few axe users over here on the left. But most of them are swordsmen. There's a couple mages and a few uh, of these guys, but the swordsmen are primarily what's on this first stage. As you can see, there's not really a lot of enemies. But, you know, it's the first stage. What do you expect? This first one is actually very, very easy. The only thing that you can risk happening is... Uh, just having somebody get ganged up on at the very beginning right here, but even then, that's not something that you're going to have a major problem with. It's not that big of a risk. And we'll go ahead and kill that dude. I think he had a Venom Edge or a Killing Edge, one of the two. 
Like I said, there are a few Venom items. I think one of these guys has one. Yeah, the Scarret here. So they might get somebody, but most of the time they don't. If Boyd has not gotten very good level ups and speed, he may get hit, but that's about it. So I'm going to leave Ike and Oscar back here. Ike, because he's already maxed out and he can just kill the four enemies that show up. And Oscar, because he's got the weapon triangle in his favor, so... Okay, good, that guy cannot reach Mist. There's a lot of areas you can't tell on the map, and it's not because of my capture card or anything. It's just because of the fact that it's not really shown that well. There's a lot of swamp areas. I don't know if they call them marsh, swamp, murk, whatever. Um, I'll be sure to shut off whenever the enemy is done with their turn. But it actually hinders your progress in moving. Not as bad as the desert map, but enough to where it's noticeable. show that off right here. Any kind of a dark spot like uh, right here where it says swamp that'll be sure to slow you down a little bit. So you just gotta watch out for that. Uh, I'd love to do that but that Elwind only has one more use on it. If anybody's wondering about uh, getting adept with one um, point left I believe you can but even though I got adept right there let me check. Yeah, 30. Oh, okay, well, never mind. I guess you uh, can't get adept with only one hit left, but... Oh, well. Go ahead and take that guy out. And use Stefan to take this guy out. Astra! Yeah, you see how it started off just being a normal attack, and then it, all of a sudden it started getting criticals? It does that sometimes. It's kind of a strange pattern. I don't fully understand the pattern behind it. But it does seem like it's very likely to get crits, or maybe it's just because, you know, Swords Masters have a very good critical hit percentage with pretty much any type of sword, and giving them a killing edge is essentially an instant critical. And he got me with the Venom weapon, so I guess we'll have to use Restore. But, hey, that's experience for Mist, so I'm not going to complain about it. Oh, we also got an antitoxin from that guy, so I guess we could just have Boyd use that on himself. But anyway, going back to uh, Ike, having... You need to get him to level 20 at this point. Reason, another good reason... Wow, double critical. Nice. Another reason that you want to get him to level 20, especially in these first ones, is because I believe after stage 2, so for stage 3 and 4, he'll be carrying a unit. I'm not going to spoil who it is, but he'll be carrying a person. No, it's not racing before you ask. Um, he'll be carrying a unit, and the problem with that is as we've already known, rescuing is kind of problematic because it's it's a helpful tool, yes, but the problem is it really lowers your speed and, you know, a whole bunch of, of your stats, essentially. And when that happens, Ike's not going to be able to do very much except for get hit in the face. So you want to watch out for that. Steel Sword, Killing Edge. Yeah, we'll go after the guy with the Killing Edge. Always take out the guy with the Killing Edge first. That's the reason why, right there. Fortunately, Oscar barely took any damage from that, even though it was a critical. That's why I went for it with Oscar. If they had gone with it with Ike, it would have done a pretty good amount of damage. Because Oscar's got pretty good defense, and he's also got the weapon triangle in his favor, so... Ah, missed. Oh, well. Well, he missed, too. Wow, that was a very anticlimactic battle. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and not ward heal, just for the sake of healing. Okay, let's see. Uh, is there anything over near Rolf? Not really, no. Let's go ahead and do that. If you want to cheap out the system, you could essentially... I mean, poison's only going to last for a certain amount of turns, in this case, uh, four. So you could cheap out and essentially heal, let Boyd take the damage from poison, and then heal him again, just keep getting experience from it. But I'm not going to do that, so... I'm just going to move Boyd right over here and let Mist take care of that next turn. And they're probably, yeah, both going to go for Ike. I expected that. And fortunately, I did get a critical on that guy. Okay. 
No, pfft. You stop that, dude. You need to pay attention to doing You're looking something up. Um, you know how they had the uh, sacred tongue in chapter 15? I'm going to go ahead and tell you what Rayson said, if you can actually remember it, which says, Sacred tree, seed, root, and trunk, awake from your slumber and heed my cry. Answer the call of the green mighty ones. And that's what it is. But uh, one of the characters we're going to meet uses nothing but the ancient tongue because that's all they know. So I'm opening up Serenus Forest, and I'll hopefully be able to put a link in there as well. And I'm going to translate it for you guys directly. Just so you don't have to wonder, what the heck is that person saying? Now you'll actually know. Um, we'll go ahead and... Oh, cool, we can actually kill this guy with the final L wind from this tome. So we don't have to waste that, uh... Or use it and then not get a kill with it. Very nice. I've always noticed every time playing this, Soren's magic and skill are almost always the same number. I mean, granted, they have the same growth rates, but it's kind of funny. And sometimes resistance will be pretty close to the same. Or almost always is. I'm pretty sure it's like one off right now. No, they are, they're all the same. I'm just going to form a miniature wall right here. Okay, we're good there. Axe user and a mage. Okay, good. He missed Stefan. Stefan seems to have... I'm just going back to the, his bad luck stat, which I know evasion isn't about your luck stat completely. It is a little bit, but most of it has to do with speed. But Stefan seems to have really bad luck at getting hit, even though he's a swordsmaster, which are designed to dodge attacks quite well. Most of the time when I play this. Sometimes he does really well, sometimes he does awful. I don't know why. And he's a swordsmaster. He doesn't get a lot of HP. He needs to be good at dodging. If he's not, then that means he's essentially going to die. And in other playthroughs, I have had problems with uh, Stefan dying on me. Okay, we're going to take out everybody except for that mage, I guess. Get rid of this guy. Yeah, he's not going to get a lot of uh, experience for each kill, because once I uh, scroll over to his stats here... And Boyd leveled up to level 2 warrior. Very nice. Gets more speed. Very nice. His strength can get all the way up to 30. Got a killer lance. I'm going to send that to the convoy. But you'll notice Stefan's already level 9 swordmaster. I don't think anybody is a class 2 unit that's level 9 at this point. Soren's level 7, but that's not quite there. I'm just going to leave Leith where she is. And we'll just let that last mage attack, and then I'll get rid of him. Yeah, I figured he'd go for Boyd. Of those three characters, Sniper, Swordsmaster, uh, Warrior, Boyd would be the ideal unit to go after. S uh, simply because he probably has the worst evasion stat. Which isn't his fault, that's just how his class is. So his Warriors are attack-focused. Archers are speed and dodging focus, and Swordsmasters are skill and dodge focus. Okay, we'll take out this guy. Kind of blanked out there for a minute. I'm like, does he have enough strength to kill him with a longsword? But yeah, he did. Even if he didn't, that critical would have solved it right there. Hand axe, you can send that to the convoy. You do get a lot of weapons. Well, not a lot of weapons, but you get some weapons here, and if you want to keep them and trade them over to somebody, that's perfectly fine. If you don't have the money to, uh, you know, get new weapons like I did, you can always do that as well. And I believe that was the last unit on the map. And it was just a simple route, if you didn't already notice. And every time it'll always talk about a... Uh, we should call in reinforcements. It says this every time, and very rarely do I actually call in reinforcements. But anyway, we're actually not going to end the video here. We're going to move on to stage two. So that's something you're not used to seeing here. And we're back with the three hawks. Jennifer, Uki, and Tabarn.
and so they head off looking for Rayson. Again. Do you hear a sound? No, nothing special. I guess it was just me. And Leith hears it as well. I don't think you get this conversation with Leith if you don't have her or Mordecai in your team, but maybe that's just me. And then it talks about the Galder. I'm not sure how you pronounce that word, but I call it the Galder because that's just the easiest way for me to say it. So, A Galder is something we'll actually be seeing fairly soon. What it does is it does certain things to your character. For example, it will, there's one called Vigor, and what this will let uh, your character do is after it's already moved and hit weight, you know how it kind of your character grays out? You can actually use Vigor on them and let them, uh, you know, attack again, heal, do whatever. Um, there's another one. I can't remember what it's called. I want to say it's like Bless. I think it starts with a B. I'm not sure what the actual name is for it. But what it does is it restores your biorhythm to the highest point. I find that one pretty useless, but you know, it's another one. Oh, hey, it's racing. So he's going to go to the altar, give the voice for the forbidden magic, and destroy the humans. Yay! So as you can see, we can't reposition, we can't even call our units back. What you can do is choose two units, and they will show up on, I believe, the second or third turn. I think it's the second, though. And they'll show up and try to help you as, mu you know, as much as they can, so... That's always uh, something you can choose to do. I'm not going to be doing so. Um, really quick formation here. You can see most of the units here are horseback. There's a dragon rider up here. But most of the units are horseback. There's a few soldiers and archer over there, but most of them are horseback units, so... Pull axes are great here. Anything that's good against a cavalry, so that's what you want to go for here. Um, there, unlike the first map, no uh, reinforcements are going to show up near the start, so you don't have to worry about that at all. So that's cool. And this one, also unlike the first stage, is actually as you can see, there's a green, not a green. <laughs> It's not green at all. Where are you getting green from, man? That's a blue square over there. So you can actually just go straight over there and simply arrive with any of your characters. So that's always an option if you want to do it. What I usually do is I take my fastest characters over here. So Rolf and... Not Rolf. Oscar and Leith. Uh, tempted to take Stefan. I'm going to go and take Stefan for the simple fact that... uh. Really, most of these units already have lances anyway. I don't think there's any axe users on this entire map. There's a sword user right there, but no axe users. Or at least I didn't see any. I could be wrong there, but I did not see any axe users. The great thing about having sword on these maps is kind of like the desert. It's easier for mages and healers and ex um, and the like, you know, flying units to get across these maps because there's no... Um, movement di uh, movement what's the word I'm looking for movement something your movement does not get affected negatively by the swamp if you're one of those units kind of like the desert as it would with you know for example swordmaster fighter etc if you're wondering what that little red flash was I think that was cancel I'll check Lee's skills, because I'm pretty sure it's one of the skills that I gave her, so I think it's probably cancel. It's it's a lot easier to figure out what the offshoot... Oh, okay, good. Didn't kill her. Even if he had doubled. If Mist is not a high enough level, she can get killed very, very easily. You jerk. Stay away from Mist! But anyway, it's a lot easier in Radiant Dawn to figure out what skills activate, because in the bottom left or right corner, it will actually tell you what skill it is, you know, cancel. It'll also tell you if you get a critical, anything like that. Good use of Vulnerary. I know Mist doesn't seem like she's getting a lot of good HP growth, but she seems to get a, some really good HP growth the minute she classes up. Don't understand why, but, you know, since she really needs HP, I would not complain about that. 
We're gonna equip the uh, long sword, just make sure it's there. Effective against cavalry. Oscar have anything good against cavalry? He's good heavy spread, that's good against armored units, but steel lance will have to do. Which there's nothing wrong with the steel lance. Besides, he's got soul equipped, so if they do enough damage, I guess he can always just use soul and get it right back. Weapon level up, that's nice. Uh, we'll go ahead and put him here, I guess. I'm gonna go ahead and take out this bow paladin over here because A, he's got a Laguz bow, and that could be potentially problematic for Leith. And B, he's, I think, the only unit there, except for maybe that uh, paladin over there, the one on the white horse that had a ranged attack. I know that sword user doesn't have a ranged attack because there are no ranged swords, minus the uh, magic swords that we'll see later on. Uh, so that just leaves Ike, so we can just end the our phase right there and let them move on. And I forgot to check and see if Lee's skill was cancelled, but I'm pretty sure it was. I'll find out in a second here. So we're letting the enemy move here. Let's go and find something to talk about. Oh, cool, we got Vantage and Adept. I mean, Vantage always activates in this game, but... Vantage and Adept is a great combo. That's why I always give um, Vantage to Soren. I believe he comes with Adept already, but it's a great combination. Works wonders. I love it. Go and use Ward one more time before the staff breaks. Get that last amount of experience drained out from it. And there we go. But since we need something to talk about, believe it or not, it is actually snowing here. I'm recording this on the the 12th, three days away from my birthday. Uh, it is actually February the 12th, and it's snowing in Lubbock, Texas. Who would have thought? Oh, weapon level up. What did I bring him to? A? Yep, sure enough. I think I've already gone over this before, but Soren works just fine with any other... Uh, let's see if I can get this guy with a long sword in here. 941, 640, yeah, we'll just go with this. That'll work. Long sword's almost out of uses anyway, might as well put it to good use. But Soren works just fine with any other spells, thunder or uh, fire. I prefer to give him thunder, or not thunder, I prefer to give him wind. I have tried it with fire and thunder both. Thunder seemed to miss a lot more, as it w uh, you should well expect. Because, you know, thunder, we already know, has very bad accuracy. But fire works pretty well, so if you want to try to use fire, then that's just fine with me. Like I said, there's a unit later on that's a fire mage, and I will be using that unit. And it's a little bit iffy to use that unit in particular, because they don't tend to get very good level ups in HP, and being a mage, you kind of need some HP. But regardless, it can still be beneficial, so I prefer to keep Soren on the wind spell, and then let uh, that person use fire. As for our Thunder Mage, Ileana, I'm not a, really a fan of hers. In the uh, sequel to this game, she has a pretty good use, which is the ability, you're going to fight a lot of dragons in one of the final chapters in Radiant Dawn, and that can make her pretty useful. But there's also a Dragon Foe skill, which does bonus damage against uh, Dragon Tribe Lagoos, and that can do some serious damage. You can go from doing about 8 damage to a unit to about 60, maybe. I'm not even kidding. I mean, that Beast Foe and Dragon Foe, Bird Foe, all those skills are really, really good. The closest thing I can relate those skills to is, like, using an Archer on a Pegasus Knight, or... There's an example right there, using a Poleaxe on an, uh... Calvary, using a hammer on an armored unit, so on and so forth. I could go on, but I think I've made my point. Oh, that actually works. Cool. That guy's a silver lance, so he can do a fair amount of damage if he gets you, but as we've already noticed, the uh, stronger a weapon is the, generally the worse the accuracy has to be. Interestingly enough, with the silver weapons, they actually have better accuracy than the, uh, Steel weapons. Rather odd, I know, but man, that's the truth. I'm not messing with you. Which makes the silver weapons really great. The minute you can buy those in the store, immediately start forging silver weapons, because you can only forge one at a time, so at a certain point, you're going to want to just start forging for the end of the game, you know, the last two chapters, maybe. 
which I'm probably going to start doing that the minute I have, or I'll probably start looking in the convoy for silver weapons. Mid and physic. Oh, I wish I had Volk with me. I could have stolen that physic staff, but oh well. I'm going to take out, out the guy with the physic staff, actually, because he could be more annoying. Even though there's only two units he could heal, not going to risk that. Because that would just undo any work that I already had done on that. As you can see, these first two stages are very, very simple for the uh, easy fact that, A, there's not really a boss. You've already probably noticed that. There's not really a boss for this. And then also, you know, there's not a lot of units. These just really aren't hard maps. It's just like making sure your characters can endure a fair amount of punishment by either dodging or taking very little or no damage. And then also, the ability to manage your items well enough to where you're not losing um, weapons so much that you can't attack with anybody because they have no weapons left. As long as you go in here with a decent amount of weapons, then you should be fine. And I always try to keep three or four weapons for any character that I will be using. That should just be a general rule for anybody. I don't know why that healer decided not to heal. The unit I just killed, but he didn't. So, he's a weirdo. Yeah, the only reason I did that is because I want to kill that healer before I uh, finish the uh, with the arrive condition for Soren. Just for the sake of killing him. I know he can't really do anything. I mean, he can run, but he can't hide. So, yeah. And there we go. And yeah, talking about more reinforcements. Really, you don't need them. The only reason you would need them is because of weapon uses, not because of difficulty. So I'm actually going to end on this screen right here because whenever I hit yes, it's actually going to move on to stage three. And since I'm going to record back to back, I need to pause the video and check my Skype for whatever K-Man sent me. So, next time on Let's Play, Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, not Radiant Dawn. I did not mess it up, thank goodness. We will be uh, taking on the next two stages of Chapter 17, Daybreaks. So I will see you guys then. Later.